So 2020 was a pretty decent year for anime with so many amazing shows like Great Pretender and Razor Season 2 coming out. But I'm not gonna talk about all those animes today because you've probably heard too much about them already. And yes, I'm very late with this video. It's probably gonna be a year ever since all the 2020 animes came out. But could you really blame me? I just didn't have time. And yeah, if you read the title and if you're an anti furry, you're probably punching the air right now, because today I'll be talking about Beastars. So if you've been living on a rock and haven't heard about Beastars before, Beastars in simple terms is just Zootopia but IRL. And if you're confused, just think of the world we live in, but all humans have just morphed into animals for whatever reason. And yeah, that's Beastars right there. Beastars is a show that has comedy, drama, gore, bloodshed, horror, speciesism, everything you can relate to, regardless of whether you are an animal or a normal human being. And you might be like, oh, if I can watch an anime where it's just a carbon copy of real life, why would I want to watch an anime when I can just experience it real life? I mean, that's true, but... Now fuck all that, I'm just gonna get straight into the real stuff, the stuff that makes your dick hard and your pussy sweat. Now if you've heard of anyone mentioning Beastars or talked about it, you probably know that people who've watched the show have pretty good things to say about it, and myself included. So one of the main reasons why I think Beastars is good is because it's pretty relatable I guess. I mean like Zootopia, all the characters in the show are animals, but unlike Zootopia, it's not all butterflies and sunshine, rainbows and unicorns, the characters actually face a lot of the same problems we do in real life. Oh, you think herbivores and carnivores could live happily together? Well good luck with that cause they have inbuilt speciesism. Oh, you think carnivores could turn vegan without any hesitation? Good luck with that too. Fake ass government officials? Look no further. Hotel Trivago. And like there's so much more to it as well, but obviously I can't list them all. But any problems that you're likely to face in real life, they have it in Beastars as well. Are they exaggerated? Probably, but I like to say as someone who's experienced some of it, they are pretty accurate as far as I know. And at this point you're probably like, oh that's just a regular slice of life in it. And yeah, to be honest, it really is, but hold up, there's more. And the second main reason is just the atmosphere of the show in general. And I know it sounds confusing, but I'll try my best to explain this. So tiny, 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 tiny spoilers. In Beastars, the show starts with a herbivore getting murdered and eaten in the school where our main characters are studying at. And of course, naturally, the only suspects are the carnivores, right? So there's always this atmosphere hanging around the entire time. Everybody and anybody could be the culprit. And who knows, you might be looking at one, especially if they are a carnivore. It's just like playing mafia with your friends, but instead of writing a paper and you pretending to die, they actually hold up a real gun and shoot you right in the fucking face. And this is really pronounced, especially in the drama club in which the victim was a member of. So on the surface, it looks as if everyone's trying to move on from the tragedy and continue as before, like ha living happily and such. But even just a slight accident could just rip all those to shreds and all hell would break loose. And this actually happened a few times throughout the anime. And it's really fascinating because our main protagonist, Legacy, is a grey wolf. And if you've been paying attention in science class in kindergarten, you'll know that grey wolves are carnivores. So in the show, Legacy plays the role of a student and a part-time detective. And as the show progresses, he'll slowly unravel the mysteries of his friend's death and naturally, he's the main protagonist, right? So you know that he's not the culprit. I mean, he is the main character. Unless they're going for some stupid fucking plot twist like assassination classroom. <laughs> but certain incidents that happen later on in the anime might actually make you doubt his innocence because he has shown that he still has predatorial instinct. Even though he's gone full Shaolin monk, you'll know that he has tendencies to still attack herbivores and he'll still crumble at the sight of herbivore meat. And as you watch the show, you have to keep these things in mind. You have to make a mental note to yourself. So let's ask ourselves a few questions. Is the suspect a carnivore? Yup. Is Legoshi a carnivore? Yup. Is he the right size? From the silhouette, it looks like it. Does he have predatorial instincts? Proven multiple times throughout the anime. So could he be the culprit? Absolutely. And he fits all the criteria to the T, where he's more likely to be the culprit than 90% of the other carnivores. And it's one of the reasons why I really like the show because I've never seen anything quite like it before. Like when have we seen a detective show, be it a movie, an anime, or a novel, where the detective has a high possibility of being the culprit. Like hell, I'd be damned if Sherlock ever found himself in a situation where evidence is pointing at him being the culprit. 
But now that we're done with all that, I can finally talk about my favorite part of the anime. Now, if you've watched the show and you've been paying attention throughout the video, you'll notice that I've conveniently left out something very, very important, and I try my best to not talk about this character throughout the whole video. I mean, it feels like I'm playing fucking Minesweeper with my script for fuck's sake. But anyways, the clear-cut best aspect of the show is... Louis motherfucking Louis too. I mean Louis. If you've watched the show, can you honestly disagree? Like the guy's fucking charismatic, he has a good character design, his voice acting is god tier, he's good looking. Like at this point, we might as well just call it the Louis show because every time he gets fucking screen time, the show just magically becomes better and all eyes are on him. Oh wait, if the show is called Beastar and Louis was supposed to be the next Beastar, does that mean... Nah, maybe I'm just tripping. They should just call it the Louis show to be honest. <laughs> All jokes aside, though, Louis is just hands down the best character in Beastars. Despite other amazing characters like Legacy and Haru or other decent characters like Doggo and Ibuki, he's still head and shoulders some of the rest. And dare I say, he might actually be one of, if not, the best character that has come out in recent anime. Though I mean with competition like Tanjiro is really not that impressive when you think about it. And if you're puking in bed right now, because how can the midi animal be better than Tanjiro and Fifth? You must be afraid. <laughs> I swear to god, I'm not. He is just that good. Just watch the show and you'll see what I mean. There's really nothing to nitpick about him. Is he perfect? On the surface, he is. But when you look deep down and later on in the anime, you see that he has many many flaws and he's actually not what he looks like on the surface. Which I think is just pretty good and just watch the anime and you'll see what I mean. And yeah, that about sums up all my points. TLDR, I think that everyone should watch Beastars regardless of whether you're a newbie or a fucking old hag. It really is worth your time watching. And especially if you're avoiding it because of some lame ass excuses like you don't like the animation, you're an anti-furry, or you're against animal abuse, just shut the fuck up, throw your beliefs aside, and just go watch the fucking show. Don't discriminate against the show, cause it's just too good. And yeah, that's about it. See ya.